What is the link between the wreck of the Titanic and the solving of missing person cold cases in the USA? Well, both were found with sonar, a technology which uses sound to locate objects and measure distances in water. We currently know more about the surface of Mars and the Moon than we do about the seabed here on Earth. If flight MH370 were lost on Mars, it would be easier to find than just four kilometers beneath the Indian Ocean somewhere off the western coast of Australia. We have mapped all the land from space and have visited or used almost all of it in some way or another. But as far as the sea is concerned, only around 23% has been mapped and there are many mysteries down there that we really would like to solve, like what happened to flight MH370. 70% of the Earth is covered by water, and yet the best visibility is only about 80 meters, and that is in the eastern Weddell Sea, Antarctica. But in most of the seas and lakes around the world, visibility is much less than that. If that were in air, it would be considered as trying to see through thick fog. Diving down in the deep sea with subs or specialist ROVs is also fraught with problems, huge costs, and a general lack of interest because of the difficulties that make working in space seem easy by comparison. So how can we see what is literally less than a 13 minute drive in a car distance away, even in the deepest part of the ocean, without being crushed like a Coke can under the wheel of a car? The sea and deep water hides many things from view. But with techniques like sonar, we can now see what has been hidden from sight for years or even decades. However, sometimes when you're out on the internet, you might want to keep things hidden, like the private data on your computer and which websites you've been visiting. If you want to keep out of the crosshairs of marketing companies and others, then you need something that can stop them from tracking your every move. NordVPN combines both with not just a VPN service to hide your computer's real IP address and make it much more difficult for hackers to gain access to your computer, but also threat protection features to stop trackers, block malware, and intrusive ads. NordVPN encrypts everything you send over it, making it ideal for mobile apps when you don't know if the app is using the secure HTTPS protocol and can be used on up to six devices at once. If you find yourself being blocked from websites or services just because you're from another country, NordVPN can make you look like you're from almost anywhere else in the world. So you can view sports channels, movies, and TV that you might not have access to in your country. Nord also has features like auto connect and kill switch. So that should you forget to turn on or turn off your VPN, you won't accidentally reveal your true IP address and location. Act now and you can get Nord's two-year deal plus four months extra for free by using the link nordvpn.com forward slash curistoid, which is at top of the description below. And there's even a 30-day money-back guarantee, so it's risk-free and there's no excuse for not trying it out. To see in deep water with a high enough resolution to pick out objects, we need sonar, which is short for sound navigation and ranging, which is similar to the technique used by bats namely a short burst of sound which is sent out and then the reflections or echoes are picked up. The further an object is away, the longer it will take the reflected sound to return and as such you can accurately measure the distance to an object, like a moth if you're a bat, or from the surface of the sea to the seabed if you're in a ship. This is made easier in the sea because water is 830 times denser than air and because of this water is effectively non-compressible and the sound waves don't lose energy like they would do in air and can travel much farther. Whales can communicate over thousands of kilometers in the right conditions because of this. If we were to do this in the air, it would be measured in just kilometers. The first use of an underwater echolocation system was thought to have been prompted by the Titanic disaster of 1912, with the first patent for an underwater echo ranging device just one month after the sinking of the Titanic. These systems were very basic, but in World War I, to counter the threat of submarines, the British Navy developed hydrophones, basically underwater microphones to listen to the sounds made by the German U-boats 
and by 1915, active sound devices had been developed, but the technology of the transducers for making the sound and then picking it up was still in its infancy. And nothing really much changed with the basic technology from 1915 to 1940. To keep the work secret, the British Admiralty made up the name Allied Submarine Detection Investigation Committee, or ASDIC, which the underwater active sound detection systems became known as to throw people off the fact that they were using quartz piezoelectric crystals using Rochelle salt and magneto-restrictive transducers. In September 1940, as part of the Tizard mission, which I've spoken about before, the British ASDIC technology was given to the US. Because of the large losses of US merchant ships to the German U-boats in the North Atlantic, submarine detection was given a top priority, and a new development of ammonium dihydrogen phosphate, or ADP, which was superior to Rochelle salt, was used in the transducers and was now much more sensitive. To this end, there were two types of sonar, active, which sends out a signal and then listens for the return, and passive, which just listens. For the Navy and in warfare situations, active is mainly used by surface ships to try and find submarines. Submarines also use it, but because it acts like a massive beacon that can be heard for hundreds or thousands of kilometers, it's not a sort of thing you want when you're trying to remain as undetectable as possible. So passive is used by submarines most of the time to listen for ships, other submarines, and things like torpedoes heading their way. They do this by having arrays of hydrophones around the hull of the ship. One example is the Sonar 2076, which is a submarine sonar detection system designed by Thales for the Royal Navy for three Trafalgar class and three Astute class submarines. Although the details of the system are classified, it's thought that it uses over 13,000 hydrophones made up of bow, flank, and towed array sensors, which as of 2010 was much more than any other submarine or attack ship in the world. But it's not just the huge number of hydrophone that matters. Having all this data needs a huge amount of processing power to make sense of it all. When it was announced in 2010, it was said to have the equivalent computing power to that of 60,000 home PCs. With the latest Stage 5, it uses an open architecture system utilizing current state-of-the-art commercial off-the-shelf or COTS processors. This allows the hardware of the hydrophones to stay the same, but the processing and software can all be easily upgraded as time goes by. To give you an idea of just how sensitive the system is, if it were on land, it could track a double-decker bus going around Trafalgar Square from a distance of 100 kilometers or 60 miles away. In the 13 years since, there have been great advances in digital processing, and now neural network engines that can be found in graphics cards and smartphones, which allow AI to be used in ways that wasn't even thought of back in 2010, which will make data processing even more important. Passive systems don't have to be fitted to seagoing vessels. They can be in the form of sonoboys, aircraft dropped disposable hydrophones that once they enter the water split into two parts. One is the hydrophone underneath the surface and one is the radio transmitter which is above the surface and sends the signals picked up to nearby aircraft or surface ships so they can then go after any submarines it detects. As every vessel that travels in the sea makes some form of noise, once their unique signature sound is known, they can be recognized anywhere in the world they go. But detecting other submarines with an active system that could be up to 100 kilometers away requires a lot of sound energy. This is normally done by surface ships because they can't hide and knowing where they are is easy to find out from the air anyway. This sound energy is measured in decibels, a bit like the sound in air, but there is a difference between underwater decibels and decibels in air. An underwater decibel, when measured in water, is one micropascal at one meter, whereas in air it is 20 micropascals at one meter. To convert from water to air, just subtract 62 dB from a water figure, or if it's the other way around, add 62 dB to go from air to water. So when people say that the sound of a jet taking off is 140 dB in air, 
then in the water that will be 202 decibels. Or when an active sonar signal is 240 dB at 1 meter, in the air it will be 178 dB at 1 meter. So although sonar systems are incredibly loud in water and would do serious damage to anyone close enough, that doesn't translate into the same figures that we would hear in air. However, mapping the ocean floor from the surface requires a lot less acoustic energy. That's because the signal only needs to travel 11 kilometers in the deepest part of the ocean, the Challenger Deep, and at the Titanic wreck site, it would only be 3.8 kilometers. To map the ocean bed in high resolution, multiband sonar is used. This sends out multiple beams of sound at different frequencies from the bottom of a ship, usually in the shape of a fan up to eight kilometers wide. The time taken for the sound to return gives the distance to the seabed and can show the shape of any geological formations. But the strength of the beam returning, known as backscatter, can also tell the operators what type of material it is made of. A strong signal would indicate something hard like rock, whereas a weak signal would be soft like mud. It can also show features in the water column like bubbles from undersea thermal vents or leaking pipelines. However, at great depth, scanning from the surface will reduce the resolution greatly, so they are often towed on remotely operated vehicles or ROVs or autonomous underwater vehicles, AUVs, close to the seabed. But to get the best images of smaller objects like shipwrecks or planes, side scan active sonar is used. This uses side mounted transducer arrays that scan frequencies from 50 to 100 megahertz, depending upon the size of the scan and the resolution required. The images which are made up from the sonar data are shown as dark and light areas. Hard objects send a strong echo and create a dark image. Shadows and soft areas send weaker echoes and create a lighter area. These dark and light images can look like photographs, but they are actually only visual representations of the acoustic data. These are the type of systems that are being used to try and find flight MH370, but they can only scan a small area in comparison to the size of the ocean and the price of doing so often becomes too much for governments and the search stalls. Side scan sonars don't measure depth, so when surveying they are often used alongside multi-band sonar. But this very high resolution side scan sonar is also very expensive. But there are now low cost versions of sideband sonar and sonars made for finding fish, which can be well under $20,000. Some of these have been used by enthusiasts to look for interesting objects in lakes and rivers, and it was only a matter of time before they were finding cars that had either been dumped or had crashed sometimes a decade or more ago, with the unlucky occupants still in them that had been unable to escape. These had become missing persons cold cases that the police just couldn't solve, and yet they might have been in a lake or a river right next to the road they left, but the dark muddy waters obscured them for often years until someone with a sonar rediscovered them. High resolution sonar will continue to become better, especially when coupled with neural networks and machine learning to process the data. And it will only become just a matter of time and invariably money before many of the secrets now hidden are revealed. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, then please thumbs up, share, and subscribe. And a big thanks go to all of our patrons for their ongoing support.